The Y world of gaming is a weird one, and every month, GameRanks puts together the weirdest stories we can find and deliver them to you on a silver platter, because that's what you want, right? I, I, I hope so, because, hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on GameRanks, the weird gaming stories of March 2023. Starting off at number 10, Valve hit us this month with the idea that Counter-Strike Go is about to be replaced with Counter-Strike 2. It's free and is gonna add a lot of new features as well as bring back some that haven't been around for a while. But what we're looking at is how they're handling cheaters. Uh, first off, if you're banned in CSGO, you ain't playing Counter-Strike 2 on VAC secured servers, but not regular VAC. The Valve Anti-Cheat is going to be upgraded to something called VAC Live, which if a cheater gets detected during a match, the match will be canceled. And I have a feeling that's not going to be met with a lot of love from people who don't cheat, but get stuck in a match with a cheater. Why not just ban that guy? You know, we're gonna take the whole match down. I have a feeling it has something to do with preserving statistics so that they aren't impacted even when a cheater didn't directly do so. One team is always at an advantage if a player has to stop playing, especially the one with superpowers that got banned for having superpowers. But it's weird nonetheless. I, I even think factoring that in, I I'm willing to bet people aren't gonna love this one. At number nine, Gran Turismo 4, a nearly 20 year old game, had somebody discover a bunch of cheat codes. Twitter user at Nenkai is the one who posted it and gave a video of a number of cheats, including 10,000 credits, passing any license, getting a gold in any specific license test, golding any event. I mean, it's actually a pretty extensive cheat list. And what's really interesting is you essentially do them by pressing different buttons on the map slash menu screen, which is not how I ever would have guessed you would input cheats into this game. But I also wouldn't have ever guessed that there were cheats in this game. The game came out on PlayStation 2 in 2000 for and it's not a place I would be looking for codes in you know it was actually the third best selling game on PlayStation 2 so it's kind of bizarre it took this long but I think a large portion of that was probably just how many people think exactly like I do why would they put codes in this game right it calls itself the real driving simulator in its subtitle nope they did and number eight, hey, I don't know if you've ever seen Nippon Animation's World Masterpiece Theater, but Resident Evil 4 is one now. Now, generally, these are full-length pieces of animation that adapt various, like, world literary milestones. Well, Capcom apparently got them to do this for sort of a trailer for Resident Evil 4, and it's so silly. All of the videos are just, like, little shorts, but they managed to pack in so many anime tropes, and the way that they portray the villagers is... I mean, I can't stop laughing at it. They just have like a pinkish hue in the whites of their eyes and some of them have tentacles coming out of their necks. Seriously, I would I would have a look at Bio Masterpiece Theater, Leon and the Mysterious Village as soon as you can if you are a fan of Resident Evil. It's, it's very weird, but like for some reason, it's also very satisfying. And number seven, Valve banned 46 Pro Dota 2 players for interference with fair competition. Um, Valve's Chinese publishing partner is called Perfect World. And in China, there is this Dota Pro circuit that's regional and 46 professional players for foul play. 21 of them were handed permanent bans and the rest were time bans one year, two years, etc. Valve said that cheaters are never welcome in Dota. Dota is a game best enjoyed with an even playing field where victories are earned by skill and tenacity. Now these players are on like a variety of different teams, Knights, E-Home, Dawn Gaming, Team Mystique, etc. I'm obviously not super glued onto the Chinese Dota scene, so I don't really know any of these teams, but there have been apparently investigations on these players as some of these teams finish pretty high in the Chinese regional league so hey dudes you're not repping your country too well like i know people who think oh chinese players are just cheaters in a variety of games and uh i mean there's a ton of people there who play fair and you're kind of screwing it up for them so stop
At number six, NBA star Luka Doncic is apparently really into Overwatch. There was a Twitch streamer who was playing, what else but Overwatch, and randomly, through total matchmaking coincidence, ended up with Luka Doncic on his team. Now, the way they actually got him to say who he was is hilarious to me, too. They ask him by his username if he has any hobbies, and he says basketball and then reveals he's on the frickin' Mavericks. But kind of the thing that cracks me up the most is just how, like, casual he is about it. Like, he's actually somebody who's known for being good at Overwatch 2. For years, he's talked about it, so it's not like this is an odd thing in his life, just in everyone else's. And if you're wanting to know, he's tanking. Like, he's actually playing as a tank in the new format, so I'm guessing he's particularly good. I would not be doing that. I'm not good at Overwatch at all. Or basketball. How, how do you get, like, super good at two things that take tons of practice, man? Do you have any free time at all? At number five, some guy built a roller coaster tycoon coaster that goes on longer than the universe. And he did it without mods. That's kind of the more impressive thing about this that I haven't really seen a lot of people talk about. Because the number, the number of years it will take is not something I can pronounce. I'll, I'll try to, but it would take over three <clears throat> quinvigitillion years to complete this ride in real life. He explains how he did it. It has to do with making roller coasters that are incredibly slow and very long and syncing them up to each other, and I, I don't understand it, nor do I even vaguely comprehend the actual number. Here's a picture of the actual number. I, I don't understand that. It's hard for me to conceptualize a billion dollars, so that many years, I, I uh, Yeah, this is one of those things where it's just like, my brain is completely melted even trying. I don't get it. And number four, uh, people are worried about E3. So... At number three, a father forced his son to play 17 hours of video games without sleep after catching him playing a game on his smartphone at 1 a.m. Yeah, I don't know if you remember the old, oh, you want to smoke cigarettes? We'll smoke cigarettes. Or, hey, you want to drink beer? We'll drink beer. And then, like, some form of what's probably child abuse and definitely illegal happens as the father forces the underaged child to smoke and or drink. Yeah, it didn't work that well, I don't think. I, I don't think alcoholism went away thanks to that punishment. Um, and I would say that playing video games at 1 a.m. is probably not as bad as any of those things. But uh, I would guess that the punishment will probably be as effective. It's kind of messed up, too, because, like, they filmed it, I guess. Maybe they streamed it. I, I don't really know. But the kid is, like, really leave tired clearly and starts to nod off and then the dad will just like shake him awake like the video game part isn't really the problem i'm sure a kid would go 17 hours straight playing a game sure uh the problem is the sleep deprivation that's wrong at number two, uh, this is kind of a rest in peace. This sucks a lot. Lance Reddick, um, an actor and Destiny's Commander Zalvala, he passed away at the age of 60. Uh, he was an incredibly well-liked actor who has been in the John Wick films and obviously a, a big name to people playing Destiny. He was also in the landmark show The Wire. I mean, he's got a really impressive acting resume. And according to his publicist, he passed away suddenly, but that it was natural causes. So I, don't, I, I, don't, I wouldn't speculate on exactly what it is, but it sounds like a heart attack, which, man, that sucks. Like, this was a really well-loved guy, and it, it sucks a lot. Uh, again, rest in peace, Lance Reddick. And finally, at number one, an old school RuneScape player named Devious set a challenge for himself to max out four different Iron Man accounts, which I'll have to explain a little bit for you. Old school RuneScape has a mode called Iron Man, which makes it so you can't use any of the social features to gain items, essentially. You have to get them the grindy way. And it takes a very, very long time to max out somebody at Iron Man. Now, since Iron Man was introduced in 2014, 
different Iron Man variants have also been introduced that ultimately just take away more and more features, making them harder and harder to use. And this guy went for the quintuple. So without trading with other players, without accessing market hubs, it took Devious eight and a half years and 19,128 hours to become the first player to max out all four. It's hard enough to do it on one at the lowest Iron Man, which the lowest Iron Man is a hell of a thing. But he did all four of them while playing other competitive games. Uh, this guy's a professional esports player. And again, like I said with Luka Doncic, when do these guys, like, do these guys have other time? Like, do they do they do things? Do they eat? Do they sleep? I don't know. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at BitFalconTheHero. We'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.